How low HP touchpad users, great news. CyanogenMod Mod 10.2, Android 4.3 unofficial nightly builds have appeared for the HP touchpad. Come check it out here in the XDA Developers Forum. These are put together by recognized developer Milak. So come check it out and thank our talented developer. Let's go over some important notes about the ROM. A very important note about this build is that it requires a larger system partition. Previously, we have a 400 megabyte system partition, which is given to us by the Acme Installer 3. Milak is recommending a 500 megabyte partition for this particular build, and we may need this for future ROMs anyways. So he recommends using uh, the Preware WebOS app, Taylor, to change the system partition size, that's the first one in the list here, to 500 megs. We'll be covering this in the video later. I'll show you how to install Preware and how to get this running with the Taylor app. So we're going to go through that, stay tuned for that. Here are the download links for the ROM. Here are the Google Apps package links the changes, the commits, and the issue tracker. All available in the OP. Of course, we must give a thanks to all our talented developers and everyone who's helped to get us to this point with CyanogenMod and the HP Touchpad. Thanks, everyone. Next up, let's talk about the known bugs. First off, uh, the Wi-Fi does not turn off in suspend mode. When you put the tablet to sleep, the Wi-Fi does not stay connected, even if it's set up to do this. To fix this, we simply go to Wi-Fi, advanced settings and unselect Wi-Fi optimization or work normally after doing this. Next up, UI sounds are not playing. When we navigate around in our user interface, there will be no sounds. When you click buttons, there's usually a little click. There's absolutely nothing. Now this was taken out on purpose, so don't worry about it. Not a big deal. Next up, uh, the Wi-Fi region code does not stick. So if this is an issue for you, you might want to stay with another ROM, but I'm sure this will be fixed in time. Uh, now there has been issues with various ROMs and beeping when you play audio playback with the screen off. Uh, I haven't actually had any problems with this in this build. I've been testing out playing music with the sound off and I've had absolutely no problems yet. Uh, in addition, of course, there's no Bluetooth support whatsoever. No Bluetooth in this particular build. If you need Bluetooth, you can stick to the JC Sullen's CM 10.1 build, also based on Milak's older Nightly's. And the final problem is the camera aspect ratio is incorrect. Not a big deal, the camera still functions, but technically only partially functioning in this build. So come check it out, take a look, and thank Milak. All right, now we're all set with all our information. Now it's time to talk about how to install these builds. Well, luckily, I've got full threads at XDA Developers Forums and Roots Wiki talking about how to install newer builds of Android onto the HP Touchpad. I've got all the detailed information here. In addition, there's also a ROM guide. So here's the 4.3 links from my Roots Wiki guide. And right below it, you'll find all the 4.2 links. As you'll notice, there's less red, there's less problems with the 4.2 as they become more mature now. But since 4.3 ROMs are so new, you'll see a lot of helpful and useful points here telling you how to fix problems and get prepared to use these ROMs. So check out my threads for the full guide and information. Now let's talk about the nightly builds. Here are my own notes on it. It has a low to medium high battery drain. It has minus four to minus 30 kind of range during deep sleep. The hardware video acceleration works just fine. There's nightly builds and the audio does seem to play with the screen off. There's Pi controls. Uh, important note about this is the volume controls are inverted in this build. Down is up, up is down and all that sort of thing. Get used to it, it's just part of this raw. And uh, the camera doesn't fully function, uh, but it does work, so you can take pictures and everything, but the aspect ratio is off, and of course, no Bluetooth support. Now, I mentioned earlier that we need to repartition the system size to 500 megabytes to accommodate this larger ROM. Well, I've kind of worked around this a little bit and took a few things out of the GApps package. Now, these are nothing essential you're going to be missing. Uh, optional stuff like face lock stuff, which we won't use with the HP touchpad anyways, and Google Plus and the Google Search. Both of these are available from the Play Store and can be downloaded after we install this. Now, basically, this just makes it possible to have a straight, dirty flash install you can go over your current ROM with this package and still have space left otherwise if you use the regular package you'll be totally out of space and you can't do that so you can check out uh, my light 4.3 G apps in the forum links or the videos description 
please check out my forums for all the latest information on the ROMs and all your troubleshooting and helpful information. You simply go down, here's the GApps downloads, notes about fix and tweaks, troubleshooting, all the important and helpful information you might be looking for. So check out these guides and please subscribe and like the videos to see all the latest information on the HP touchpad and Android. Now let's talk about installing these ROMs. First, we're gonna show you how to install a preware package. Check it out. Now, first off, we're gonna to need to boot into WebOS. I'm in WebOS right now. Right here in the Just Type menu, we're gonna to need to enable developer mode. Now, there's two ways to do this. We can type the old school contra code of up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start, or we can type WebOS 20090606. Either of these will take us to developer mode. We'll need to have developer mode toggled on in order to do the next step. So here's the toggle in the upper right hand corner. You simply swipe it to on. It'll take a moment to turn on and then you'll be ready to go to the next step. We're going to transfer over to our computer and then come back again. Now that developer mode is enabled on our tablet, we're ready to install Preware. But before we can do this, we'll need to have Java and the Novacom software installed on our computer. If we've recently installed CyanogenMod, we should already have both of these and can go right to installing the WebOS Quick Installer. If not, download them both from the link below. First install Java. There's the big red button here to download and install it. It's very straightforward. Then download and install the Universal Novacom software. Go to Downloads and download it here. Once both of these are installed and ready to go, we'll download the WebOS Quick Installer. It's a link from WebOS Nation. Download it and we're going to transfer it to our desktop. Before we can run this, we need to plug our tablet in with the USB cable. If we try to run this before, it won't work. We only need to plug the tablet in. We don't need to enable USB drive mode. Simply plug it in and then run the software. We need to click on this little orb here. It's a little globe. Here is a whole menu of things we can search. We're going to get the preware and search. Simply install it here by clicking the button and wait while it transfers and installs it on the device. There we go. We're all done. We can now disconnect our USB cable and navigate to it on our tablet. Now we got our preware installed. It's time to install Taylor. You can find the preware in your download section here. Simply open up the Preware app and we're going to navigate and look for Taylor. You can click the little search window up in the upper right hand corner and type in Taylor. Hit enter and it should find it right away. You will install it by clicking a button down here. I've already got it installed so it gives me the option to launch it. Let's start it up. Here we are in Taylor. You can see the various different partition sizes here. You can see I've also already changed my Android partition to 500 megabytes. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to future-proof my device and up it to 600 megabytes. To get started, we're going to need to unmount this partition here. Once this is done, we'll need to check the file system and then we're going to be asked to enter a number. This is going to be a number where we're going to need to subtract the amount of space for our Android partition from our USB media partition. Let's check it out. Now checking the files can take a few minutes, so be patient. Now here we are. Now we need to deduct, subtract, the amount of space that we're going to need for our Android partition from this media partition. So we're going to change 25944 to 25844 to give us 100 megs of free space to play with. Simply enter it in here and hit resize partition. This can take a few minutes, so be patient. 
Now that that task is completed, you'll see that we have more space in our unused space here. Next, click on the Android system partition and check the file system. We can now increase the size of the partition. We have 100 free megs to play with, so let's increase it to 600. Resize partition. Here we are with the completed operation. My Android system partition is now 600 megabytes. I'm ready to do a fresh, clean install of any version of Android I like. Please check the video's description for the links to the forums. You can get all the info, helpful videos, information, fixes, tweaks, all that great stuff. Check it out. Please subscribe to see the latest updates with the HP Touchpad and like the video so more people will see it. Thanks for watching, everybody.